cannot continue to live like this. I must see you. I must, if only for a moment. When you were here, even the time I was compelled to pass away from you brought me nearer to you. If I carried out my duties, they rendered me more worthy of you. If I cultivated some talent, I hoped I should please you more. At a concert, I was reminded of the music which we made together. And now, what have I left? Nothing. Nothing but, but a pain and a faint hope which grows ever weaker by Valmont's silence and yours. When will he or you tell me how and when I am to see you? Is it no longer your wish as it is mine? No, I, I, I repel the idea which would put the finishing touch to my misfortune. No, you love me. You will always love me. I believe it. I'm sure of it. I cannot doubt it. But my situation is terrible, and I cannot endure it much longer. Goodbye, Cecile. Heavens! How your letter distressed me. I cried a lot in reading it. I, I don't blame you for that. I have already cried many times on account of you, but this time it is not the same thing. What do you mean when you say you cannot live any longer this way? Will you stop loving me because it is not as agreeable as it was before? It seems that I am no happier than you are, on the contrary, and yet I love you the more. What do you expect me to do? It is difficult even to receive your letters, still more difficult to write to you. Sometimes I can find time in the afternoon under the pretext of singing or playing my harp, and even then I must break off at every line so that they can hear I am working, and I write under the covers when everyone has gone to bed. One has to be very much in love to do all of this, and I wish I could do more. Goodbye, my dear. I love you with all of my heart, and I shall love you all of my life. Write to me as soon as you can. Pray, madame, let us continue this conversation so unhappily interrupted. If the friendship you offered me was not an empty word, you will not do me the injustice of refusing to hear me. A, a second interview will have no more disadvantages than the first. The word love so intimidates you. And why? A more tender attachment, a closer union, the same happiness and the same griefs what in these is foreign to your soul? Everything becomes more precious when it is done by love or for love. I am willing to believe that I am wrong. If that annoying third person had not come in, perhaps I should be already entirely of your opinion. Shall I confess it? Sometimes I... I am afraid of this power you have over me. Perhaps it is I who should dread this interview I ask for. But the pleasure of hearing you makes me brave the danger. You saw how we were thwarted yesterday? All day long. I was unable to hand you the letter I had for you. So, I have been considering means of putting aside these obstacles. And I think I have noticed that the key to your bedroom door is always on your mama's mantelpiece. If I have it for two hours, I can get it copied. In order that it shall not be missed, I enclose one of my own, which is rather like it. You must merely put a faded blue ribbon on it, like the ribbon on yours. 
If you give it to me at breakfast tomorrow or the day after, then at dinner time, when we go from the drawing room to the dining room, you have only to leave your tapestry frame slowly, or let something drop so that you come last. You will then be able to take the key back, which I shall be careful to hold behind me. <laughs> I hope I not, I've not forgotten anything. I am unaccustomed to intrigue, but... Your mama's harsh treatment of you justifies this little deceit. Moreover, it is the only safe way for you to continue to exchange letters with Dolceny. When this communication is established between us, it will be much easier for me to arrange for you and Dolceny to meet. But do not speak to him about this yet. You would only increase his impatience when it is not yet time to satisfy it. Goodbye, my fair pupil. For you are my pupil. I am busying myself with your happiness, and you may rest assured I will find my own in it.